Everybody know who Moses is, right? Yes. How many know he was a friend of God? Yes. How did he get to be a friend of God? You know, I really don't know. Part of it was his call. There's not a lot, you know, maybe he was on the backside of the desert and he saw the burning bush. We know all that. But I don't know if his was his call and his place. But we know that Moses got to talk to God face to face. You remember the two, you remember when Moses went and married somebody that they all didn't like because she was from another culture, another place, they didn't like her. And remember uh, they said this, was it Miriam that said, does not God, are we not prophets? Does God not also speak to us? And then suddenly leprosy everywhere. And then Moses, being a friend, entreated God and basically said, I get it, Lord. You know, God, forgive them. And so the Lord did, and they were healed. But what God said was, basically, you can't talk about my friend that way. Amen. Are you a friend of God? He's got you. Amen. And so I was thinking about that. I'm just kind of meditating. I've had a crazy weekend. If you weren't, I didn't think I mentioned it in second service, but, you know, Pastor Rhonda was preaching tonight, and I was going to take the night, and I was meditating, and I was laying in my bed, and suddenly um, I smelled smoke, and it felt like the house was on fire, and so um, our neighborhood was bright with three fire trucks, four police cars, um, the neighbors all out in the yard. And nobody could find anything. Today, we discovered that our upstairs air conditioner in the attic um, caught on fire. And the dude said, y'all are lucky. He said, y'all are lucky. Well, I don't let anybody get around with telling me I'm lucky. I just said, no, no, no. I said, Jesus spared our lives. Because he said, in my career, I've only seen that twice. And uh, the Lord is good. But my point is, it was right in the middle of my meditation to get you what you needed to get. Because Pastor Rhonda was preaching and I purposely scheduled some quiet time. And then the devil interrupted my quiet time. But the Lord is here. And all I'm saying to you is, um, it's interesting that one of the things the devil will fight the hardest is your quiet time your friendship time, your appointments with the Lord. And yet the Lord will deliver you out of all your troubles. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll protect you. Hey, I, it's too late for anybody to talk me out of tithing. We've had about three or four incidents where something ought to burn. Um, you know, uh, as most of you know the story. We were living in apartments while they were building our house. The, heart, the apartment building caught on fire. We're running outside, and Pastor Rhonda turns around and yells, We're tithers! <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, you know, the next day, the fireman came to let us look at it, and he's walking up, and he said, Noth he said I'm just going to warn you, there's nothing left. Whatever the fire didn't get, the water did, there's nothing left. And to our right was open sky. He had to unlock the door, but he just looked at it and said, I'm telling you, there's nothing left. So we walked in ours. There was not a drip of water. There was no fire. You go outside on the balcony, and it was charred where it tried to get us. Hallelujah. But she invoked it. I was busy pastoring people I didn't pastor. She, after that, she was comforting people. But listen, and then we got home. We got over to Melba's house. I'll just remember it. We called um, our insurance man and said we were homeless. And then we just laid in bed and we laughed and laughed and laughed. And God did. Exceeding. Listen to me. I don't know why I'm telling you this story except for that. Don't worry when the devil tries to come bring something. Hallelujah. The worst he has to do, he, he needs to quit, learn to quit messing with you. Because the very least he's got to do is give it back double. Sometimes sevenfold. He ought not mess with us. I said he ought not mess with us. Amen. As long as you're keeping your side of the covenant, you can't invoke a covenant if you're not keeping it. 
Amen. God's keeping his. All right, so that's extra. I just want to thank God, though, but this is really strong in my heart. Um, I want you to look at Exodus 33. And Joshua has always been a hero of mine. Um, he's a pioneer. He's someone who served. He served. I believe in serving. I believe in, you know, the Lord has assi- had assigned me to help people. And it wasn't always easy. And I don't know if Moses were, was hard or easy. I do know Elijah was probably a, a little bit of a pain in the neck to serve. And Elisha did it anyway. Because he's like, what do I got to do with you? Do whatever you want. No, don't go with me. You stay here. I mean, Elijah, Elijah was a little bit of a, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's a grouchy old man. Anyway, I don't know. But Elisha served him and got a double portion. And Joshua, Joshua was really a servant of Moses. Joshua was out. Joshua was a many-faceted man. He, he, was, he was out, you know, doing war while they held up Moses' hands. And he served him. But one of the things, you know, I always, and I've told some of you have heard me say this before. See, I, I want to know, I do want to know why sometimes. So I think about Joshua and Caleb. Why were they the only two of the 12 who were able to say, we're well able? Not just God is well able. We'll, we are well able. God is for us. They're bred for us. Come on, y'all. Let's go get them. God says this is ours. Let's go take it. Yeah, yeah, the giants are big. The city walls are great. But look at them grapes, man. Them, them grapes are big. And God promised us that we would live in houses that we I mean, they're thinking about all this. And they come back and they give a good report. Why? And remember what God said about them. They have a spirit of faith. Right? The other ten, he was just flat. The Lord was just angry with because they didn't believe him. Now, listen, I, believe, I want miracles. I want to see signs and wonders. But everybody who came out out of Egypt, they saw all the plagues. Uh, Right before they left, they went to their neighbor's house and said, the Lord said, give me everything you got. So they're loaded down. They just had, um, you know, the first ever Passover meal. And, you know, there's a, the, the, the Israelites were having a barbecue and everybody was cooking lamb. And then everybody put the blood on the doorpost. And then everybody saw that the death angel passed over. And the firstborn of the Egyptians, everything was dead. Everybody saw that they walked across on dry ground. Everybody saw the first ever aquarium. Everybody saw it. Everybody turned around and saw the Egyptians all drown, whether it's a thimble full of water or it was at flood stage, it don't matter. They all drown. It's even more of a miracle if it was at a thimble stage. I mean, that's everybody with their nose in the ground and their mouth in the ground while they drown. Because I've heard some theologians say, oh, but oh, whichever way... <laughs> It's a miracle. Right? And yet. And yet. Miracles are not enough for people to stay hooked to God. People, miracles are not enough for people to follow on to know the Lord. Miracles are not. How many know he's a God of miracles? I want to see miracles. But there's something that. Miracles aren't a substitute for a relationship. And even we look into the Old Testament, we see before the law, there was this man named Joshua. And verse 10 of Exodus 33 says, And all the people saw the cloudy pillar. You know, we're all about the glory around here. And they stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man at his tent door. And then the Lord spake to Moses face to face. Woo, glory to God. So that right there was a mini face to face. We like to do worship around here where it's just us worshiping the Lord face to face. As a man, because when you get face to face with God, he can speak to you a friend. Are you a friend? Jesus said we're no longer servants, but we're friends. Amen. Don't let anybody talk you out of your friendship with God. He's God Almighty. 
he's God your father, but he said, I don't call you servants anymore. I call you friends. As a man speaks into his friend. You know, the Lord can, can tell some people some things, but he can tell his friends other things. He don't talk to everybody the same way. He don't tell everybody the same stuff. Now, it's all written down. That's for everybody. But personal stuff and different things, there are some people that he, he tells things to. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant, Joshua, but his servant, Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. What's up with that? So here's Joshua, ready with a bottle of water and, uh, you know, a cold cloth or whatever. You, what, what do you need? You've been spending time with the Lord. So after he took care of Moses' needs, what happened was he just stayed behind. Because the glory would come down in a cloud, and then God would talk to Moses face to face. I don't even know if you realize what a big deal that really is. Not just on the mountain when he gave him the Big Ten, but he, talked to, he came down and talked to him face to face as a man. That, that's interesting because God said, no man can look on my face and live. There's just something about Moses. But Joshua is serving Moses, and he's like, you know what? Let me hang out in here a minute. And so the cloud came down, and that cloud had a residue about it, but it was the presence of God. I believe from that one scripture and then what happened to Joshua, because God said about Joshua and Caleb what? I don't know what happened to Caleb, Caleb but I know what happened to Joshua. He literally got to sense the presence of God. Moses talked to God face to face, but Joshua didn't have that privilege, but he's like, I'm okay with that. I'm just going to hang out in the glory. I'm going to hang out in the presence of God. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's very important in these last days that you and I learn to hang with God, learn to be private with God, learn to get in his presence in church, yes, but on our own. Because from this, listen to me, it's important. How many of you know we teach you faith around here? If you're not signed up for Bible Institute, when you go to Bible Institute, uh, Reverend Opal is going to teach you faith one and faith two. Every time I come in, anybody else is going to come in at this church, at Bible Institute, you're going to get faith mixed with it. You're going to hear about faith and how to believe God all the time around here. And you've got to respond to God and you've got to learn how to release your faith because it's not enough just to hear. That's how faith comes. But you've got to learn because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right? And so we have to understand that. But listen to me. It's not just about principles. It's not push a button, pull a lever, say okie dokie smokey, and here it comes. You, what do you, you have to have a relationship with him. This word came from the mouth of somebody. This came from God. This came from the Father. Yes, it's the written word of God. But you've got to trace this back to the person who said it. You can do the principles and you can learn the principles and it'll work somewhat for you. But until you know him, that's why our theme around here is to know him and to make him known. I don't want to raise up a bunch of people just going through the motion. And I'm hungrier now than I've ever been. And I thank God, I feel like I've come through something. I'm on the other side of it a little bit. And uh, I'm going to be pushing in because I need to know him more. I want to know him more. I believe there's some things coming up that those who know him, ooh, hallelujah, those that know their God, those that know their God, and will be strong, they shall do what? Exploits. God's needing some people to do some exploits. Joshua was able to do exploits. When Moses was done, Joshua was ready. Why? Well, yeah, he was appointed. And yes, Moses laid his hands on him and the anointing transferred to him. The Bible says that he began to walk even in the wisdom of God, pointing back to the time that Moses laid hands on him. But I firmly believe that because he spent some time in the glory, spent some time in the cloud, because that's who God is. God is glory. God is glory. When the glory of God manifests, whether you see a cloud or you don't see a cloud, it's the glory of God in you, that power in you. We've got to be able to, to, to understand that more. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. I want to talk to you about, um, like Joshua, like Moses, getting close to God. 
Let's move a little closer. Let's move a little closer. How many know you can all get closer? How many, and so you're here tonight, so I know you, you, you want to hear. So let's look at Psalms 145, verse 18. Somebody say glory. glory. The Lord is near unto them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in God is drawing us near. But in order to get near him. So God's calling us near. God's calling us near. He's calling us in. What did he say even by that, the Holy Ghost said? Uh, there's a pavilion. Get in it. Come. We'll look at it in a minute, I think. Psalms 91. I, remember, I know that one. If we dwell in the secret place. It's a place. Under the, come on, if you get under his shadow, you're close. Right? Of the Almighty. But how do you draw near? God is drawing you near. He's painted a picture for you even tonight. I've got a pavilion. I've got a house. I've got a secret place. But I need you to get in it. Yes, I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. And it's more than positional. Listen to me, there's positional truth where you can see something in the word that you are. But until you act on it in faith, until you believe it's you. I heard Brother Moore say this the other night. Um, I was listening to him and he said, talking about the 70s and the 80s where we're all big into in him and in whom. I'm thanking God. You're going to learn that in Bible Institute around here. But you got to know who you are in him. Listen to me. A lot of people are doing this, and it is the truth, and I slip into it, and you slip into it. We're asking God to come, and he's already come. We're asking God to heal, and he's already healed. That's like when we have someone answer an altar call, and we, and they, we, cry, we tell them to cry up here and ask Jesus to go to the cross for you. How many of you know we'd say, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Lord, save me. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Well, that's not how you get saved. How do you get saved? I believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. You receive something from a finished work. Well, Lord, we need you to come. I know people are saying, Lord, we want you to manifest, but he's already here. He lives in you. Lord, I need you to heal me. So I was thinking about that, and I was, uh, something was going on, and I just kept saying, Lord, I need your help. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Have you ever gotten desperate? Lord, help me. And he said, I already helped you. Receive my help. I'm not going to keep asking him to do something he's already done. So how does that, how do you prevent that? Well, you got to know him. And if you know him as things, and you know him as things are finished, it's finished. Everybody say, it's finished. Didn't Jesus say it's finished? Then it's finished. Just like you wouldn't tell someone, ask Jesus to die on the cross for you again, and he'll save you. Ask him to take stripes on his back again, and he'll heal you. No, you don't have to do any of that. Why? It's already done. He doesn't have to come down. He doesn't have to be lifted up. The Bible says don't say that. Right? Right? Because he's already done it. What are you supposed to do? Come on, you heard my story. Well, this building, I was, you know, wrenching a gut in faith, pulling every button, quoting every scripture. My God shall supply all my needs. And, you know, the Lord just got aggravated with me. I don't tell that part very much. Because, Lord, help. <laughs> I can't do this. You know, are you surprised the Lord knows that you can't do it? How I many you know he's not really going to ask you to do stuff that you can do on your own? You're going to have to believe him. And then you remember you heard the question, Mark, does your faith move me? And, you know, being the, I have a certificate from the faith school. I said, yes. Yes, Lord, my faith moves you. I know Mark eleven twenty three. 23, I can speak to them mountains. I believe, you know, I, I didn't say all that. But, you know, he knows where I come from. Does your faith move me? And I said, yes, Lord. Like, so proud. And he said, I don't need your faith to move me. 
I've been moved. Just receive. So just remind you, how do you get there? How did Joshua get there? Relationship. See, the others couldn't see it with their eyes. They weren't walking by faith. They were walking by giants and walled cities. And if you and I, come on, I'll just be real honest with you. I'm 5'10". And I can't run very fast. And if I saw a nine-foot dude, you're the winner. <laughs> How are we going to get through that wall? They're racing chariots around it. People are living in it. What? But one of them had a relationship. And he said, if God said it, I believe it. They're bread for us. Let's go. On to victory, on to victory charge. It came from a relationship. Whatever he could have at that time. So all those who want to draw near to God, you're going to have to draw near to him with truth. And the only truth is the word of God. I've been warning you for a long time now, and I'm trying to get as plain as I can get. You need to be careful mixing the word of God with everything else around you that other preach, preaching, people are preaching, they have a good heart, they mean well. But you don't need that right now. Amen. You need the word. God can only confirm the word. Well, listen, if you need healing in your body, if you need finances, if there's something wrong with you at home, if everything is not, I mean, you're just not percolating along really good, why would you waste time hearing anything but the word of God? All it's meant to do is get you off. Wrapped in Christianity. Watch it. I'm just going to get as plain as I can. Watch it. Yeah, but I don't care who he is or she, who, who they are. I'm warning you as your pastor, you stick with the word. Be careful what you're listening to. Be careful. It will mess with your faith. You do not have time for that. Why? Well, you got people to reach. I said, you got people to reach. You got things to do for God. And things are coming. And you've got to be ready for them this time. Not to be afraid of them, just to be like Joshua. That's bread for us. Are you kidding me? That's bread for us. Yeah, but he was nine foot tall. My God's bigger than nine foot. Have you seen my angel? Dude, that's scary anybody. Hallelujah. There's more with us. Yeah? There's more with us. You got to stay focused. How do you get stay focused? Relationship. Time in his presence. How do you, God wants you to draw near. So he's calling us, draw near, draw near. How do you get near? With truth. With truth. What is truth? The word of God is truth. All the word of God from Genesis to Revelation is truth. Not everything is for you, but don't discard the Psalms. Don't, don't, discard, start, don't discard the Pentateuch. Don't, don't discard the prophets. Come on, if Jesus quoted, quoted it, it's good enough for you. Yes, you've got to place it in some places. But I'm going to tell you again, I've been hearing this. Uh, you know, uh, there's some stuff going on that just say, well, you don't need that anymore. When did God say you don't need that anymore? Come on, the word of God is good. And you've got to rightly divide it. And we mostly live in the epistles. But I'm getting ready. I'm excited. I finally get to it. I'm going to start talking to you. What, you know, people say, well, Jesus didn't teach that. We're going to find out on Sunday mornings what he did teach. We're going to find out. It might blow your hair back. Because <laughs> it's not what you think. Well, Jesus taught love and acceptance. Did he? I'll just give you a clue. He didn't. He said, I've come. Never mind. Hallelujah. Get ahead of myself. I've come. All right. So we're let, everybody say relationship. Help me, Lord. There's got good, good utterance in here, so I just got to be careful. James 4 and 8. It says, draw near unto God, and he will draw near unto you. God's calling you to draw near, but it's up to you to respond. How do we respond? If I want to get closer to God, how do I get closer? I'm going to, I'm going to find out the truth 
How can Amos 3 and 3, how can two walk together unless they what? Agree. Agree. So um, if God and I differ in anything, I'm always wrong and he's always right. Uh, He's never changing. There's no variableness, no shadow of turning with him. There's not a new Bible 2.0. You're not going to get an upgrade. Still good. Still good. He's not changing. He's the solid rock. Heaven and earth will pass away. His word will never pass away. He's unchanging. His word is always true. That's why you can build your house on it. Build your life on it. So you and I, the more truth we know, how many know, are you still learning truth? I'm still growing in truth. Are you still growing in truth? And if I'm growing in truth, I'm growing in revelation. And when I do that, then I'm drawing near to him. I'm drawing near to him. Every step I take in the word, every time I study to show myself approved, every time I rightly divide the word of truth, I am coming closer to him. As I take the sword of the spirit and a divide between spirit and soul. In other words, I fillet what is my thoughts and what is his thoughts. The word of God, a distamos, a two-edged sword or a two-mouthed sword, will fillet what is of, the, of religion, of my thoughts, of my thinking, and what is God. His ways are higher than your ways, and his thoughts are higher than your thoughts, but he has revealed them. And he will show you, but you got to get close to him. you got to get close to him. What's he doing tonight? He's just, he's just encouraging you, get closer. Get closer. Draw near unto me, and I'll draw near unto you. So, so, so really, everybody say, it's my move. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's your move. So, it, so, God, so God's saying, it's your move now. I, I've told you, even by inspiration, I, I've told you what to do. Run into me. I've told you to run into the pavilion. I've told you to come to the secret place. Now what do you got to do? Respond. How do you respond? You respond by knowing what the truth of the word of God says, and you want to be like Joshua, you want to be like Moses, and you want to, you want to make sure you're in the place of his glory. Now, the good thing about this is that you and I don't have to find a Moses because we found a Jesus. You don't need a Moses. You don't need me to get you in the glory. You can get in the glory all by yourself. How do I know that? Because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory is in you. So you can have a glorious party in your living room, in your bedroom, where you pray, in your car, driving while you're stopped in traffic. You might as well have a glorious time. But it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So you can have fellowship with the Lord all the time. That's what he's doing. That's what he's just reminding you. Draw near unto me. Draw near unto me. Let's look at Psalms 91. We've been talking about it. Let's look at Psalms 91. I hardly ever preach on this because this is my wife's revelation. We use this all the time. We were going up to Illinois just the other day. My mom was in the back seat. She got to see what I do. Maybe it's wrong, but she has a revelation. She led through India. So I just turned to her and said, pray it. (laughs) And I'll just agree. So she she does, Psalms 91. Uh, We live that. Thank God we live that. Amen. My house is alive because we live that. He that dwells in the... This tells me everybody can't get there. Is it available for every born-again believer? It is. But if it's a secret place, I think you've got to figure out how to get there. How do you get there? He's drawing you. He's drawing me. He's near all to those who call upon him in truth. So i got to know the truth. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the very shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Um, Psalms 31. Psalms 31. I guess we're going with this one, huh? Psalms 31, 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. You know, there's a whole lot of nasty people out there. There's a whole lot of tongue wagging going on out there. There's a whole lot of opinions out there. And you and I can't not participate and sit in the seat of the scornful. Amen. But, you know, know, sticks and stones 
all that kind of stuff. But listen, words are powerful. Words are powerful. And you got to protect yourself from the words. And the more you live godly in Christ Jesus, you're going to be persecuted. They're not, if, if you're waiting for your friends who are not born again or your religious friends to understand you, they're not going to. You just keep being you and lead them in. You let them watch you as an example of what God can do. But I'm just telling you, the, he says here, he's going to protect you. He's going to hide you in the secret of his presence from the pride of man, to keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strifes of tongues. Psalms 27, 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. I had two or three sermons to do, and since the Holy Ghost, the tongue and interpretation went this way, I figured this is the way we're going. <laughs> For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Come on, God's got a house. God's got a pavilion. And I, as I imagine it's not like a tin barn. When I grew up in the Midwest in Illinois, pavilions were tin barns. You know what I mean? Sheets of, uh, you know, sheets of uh, metal, and there was no protection, and a good wind would blow it over. But when God makes a pavilion and you're in there, you are safe. For in the time of trouble... He'll hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. He shall set me upon a rock. Well, that reminds me of that dude Moses. Remember, the Lord told him, you know, against the Amalekites, Joshua was out there fighting. Remember uh, Aaron and Hur? You remember we talked about this on Sunday mornings a couple Sundays ago? He went up to the mountain, and as long as the rod was up, and remember, uh, they were winning, Joshua was winning, Joshua was winning, Joshua was winning. Uh, his arm got tired. You know, I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever lifted a weight, you know, but you put a 10-pound, uh, or a, this is 5-pound. You just put a 5-pound bar, barbell, and you hold it like this. It ain't going to be long. I don't care how long you've worked out. And if you've got, you got a good one here. It's going to start sinking. It's going to start sinking. And when it went down, what happened? Joshua started losing. So the helps ministry was there. And this is what I love. They sat him on a rock. And right before that, remember, Moses struck the rock, which is a signification of Jesus, and water came out. So this is a rock. I, I, I was meditating on this ago. I have a friend up in Illinois that's had some trouble with some stuff. And it's a young lady that I've known since she was a little girl. And, uh, but I was kind of meditating in my office, and I just started meditating about Moses. And then suddenly, uh, I saw Moses sitting on a rock, kind of not, a, not a, a, a vision, so to speak, but kind of like an M-I-N-I, just kind of in the heart. I saw Moses sitting on a rock. And then suddenly, I saw this girl sitting on a rock who was having some trouble. And I saw her, man, she was dressed up. And, and she had her nails all done. And it looked like she had some of the nicest high heel. I don't know why I saw it this way, but she was just looking good. And, and, and almost like she was sitting there kind of messing with her nails, making sure they were good. And then she had one hand up, praising the Lord. And the battle was all around her. But as long as she kept her little painted hand up in the air and just was worshiping God, she won. Because she was sitting on a rock. She was resting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, there's lots of things going on around you. But if you'll find your seat in him in heavenly places, if you'll set yourself down on the rock and rest in him, and if you'll keep your hands up, what is that? The Lord told us to praise him and rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Come on, are you doing it at home? Are you doing it at home? You ought to maybe Monday night when you get home from work, you ought to just run around your house. Just run out around your house, yell, scream, holler, hallelujah, jump up and down, sit down, pray a little bit in tongues, and then rejoice again. Talk about wonder. You should be watching Wheel of Fortune. But no, you're praising God. The devil's not going to know what to do with you. Hallelujah. In him, sit on the, we're on the rock. <laughs> Remember even when Moses asked to see the glory, the Lord hid him in the cleft of the rock. 
signifying Jesus. And passed by and he saw the glory of God. Psalms 32, 7. You are my hiding place. Psalms 32, 7. You're my hiding place. <laughs> You're my hiding place. You're my hiding place. <laughs> You're my hiding place. <laughs> You're my hiding place. You're my hiding place. (laughs) You, you are my hiding place. You, I run into you and I'm safe. You are hiding me from the tongues of men. You are hiding me from the arrows of the enemy. You are hiding me. You are my hiding place. You are my hiding place. I run into you and I'm safe. You are my hiding place. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You will compass me about with songs of deliverance. (laughs) Hallelujah. You will compass me about with songs of deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I run into him. And then there's, there's these, these, it's like circling around me. There's these songs of deliverance. I'm not going under. You're not going under. We're safe. We're safe. Crazy myths may go on all around us. 10,000 over here, 1,000 over there, but it shall not approach us. We will only look on with our eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. You and I are born again. We have a covenant. We have a place to hide, and our hiding place is in him. We're seated at the right hand of God, far above every principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that's given a name. He has called you and I to sit at a table in the very presence of our enemies. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He's walking you and I through the valley of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil. 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 evil. But we got to keep on walking. Got to keep with the shepherd. You got to keep with the shepherd. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Hallelujah. They are safe. They are safe. (laughs) They are safe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not going to keep you a long time. So in that, how, how do I really get close? How many of you love the Lord? You're in on a Sunday night. That's a silly question. Of course you love the Lord. And Jesus said, and I know you're all doing it. He said, if you love me, you do what I say. Y'all love the Lord, right? Everybody in the room is a doer of the word of God, right? We're working it, right? Not just hearing it. We're doing it. Right? We're not deceiving ourselves. We're doing it. We got to keep doing it. We got to keep doing it. And so, really, tonight, I, I just hear him saying, just tell him, I need him to draw close. 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 And then your response is, I'm drawing close. I'm going to get more truth so I can come closer. There's some Macaulay, there's some Macaulay Filipostes, restoring the Buffadistes and the Shumanakangis and the Boches. So things that concern you, I've told them, I will perfect them for you. Don't worry. Don't be alarmed. Don't look around. Don't get your answer from those of this realm. Look up. <laughs> look up. Look up. I told you your redemption draws nigh. And I promise you I will redeem you from the hand of the destroyer. You and yours. And I will perfect everything that concern you. Isn't that a massacre? Oh, yeah, it's a pie. It's 
It's Kabiskis. It's Zalangis. It's Shabotas. Don't be disappointed with people around you. Quit looking at them. They will confound you. But look to the author and the finisher of your faith. Lift up your praise. Lift up your voice. Lift up your eyes. Because it's time to rejoice. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank God for utterance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for utterance. Let's respond. Lord, I believe. believe. You will perfect perfect. (laughs) everything. Everything. That concerns me. (laughs) Lord, I believe. (laughs) Lord, I believe. You will perfect everything that concerns me. <laughs> so that word there is not like we use it. So I'm not going to worry. <laughs> I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry about it. Well, they'll think I don't care. Let them think what they dare. Because I'm not going to care. I'm not going to carry it. I'm not going to get weighed down by it. I'm going to cast it on the Lord. In this room, jobs and better jobs are coming to you. Promotions and increases come in your way. Your businesses, many of them by this time next year will have doubled and there'll be no more trouble. Things that you believe for, things that you've asked of me, I will grant it to you and all will see. The hand of the Lord is not shortened. It's open wide, and I will bless you in the morning and in the night. So rest assured, my word is true. Rejoice and be glad. I've already done it all for you. (laughs) Woo! Woo! (laughs) Glory! 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 (laughs) Glory! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Victory is mine each and every time. I win again and again because I live and move and breathe in him. I'm free. (laughs) I'm free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. The truth of God is hidden in my heart. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free indeed. Free from the chains of this life. Free from even every bad memory. The Lord has saved me. The Lord has rescued me. From a dunghill, he has raised me. I'm seated above and only above. And every enemy is under my feet. So I'll rejoice and be glad. So I'll rejoice and be glad. So I'll I'll rejoice and be glad. So 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 I'll rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory! Glory! Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God! Yeah! Hallelujah! I like to stay right here. Hallelujah! I like to stay right here. Hallelujah! Shoo! Shamanama halabaheya! Hallelujah! I like to stay right here. Zila bahalabahan. <laughs> Hallelujah. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Woo-hoo. He's healing the mind. He's healing your 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 mind. Deliverance. 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 The stronghold. The deliverance. Yeah, now renew it, renew it, renew it, renew it, renew it. Now renew it, renew it, renew it. Renew it. 
Deliverance has come for you this night, but renew your mind morning, noon, and night. For the victory at hand as a stronghold has been pulled down. But you've got to renew it, renew it. Open wide your mouth and speak the truth of the word of God and you will win and you will win and you will win and you will have victory in him again and again and again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory today is mine. <laughs> Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan. <laughs> Victory today is mine. Man, the Lord is doing some great things in here. He's doing some great things. If I was depression, I'd get up on out of here. Get up on out of here. I command you to loose your hold in Jesus' name. I, I'm, not, I'm not asking. I'm telling you to let them go. I told you to get up on out of here. I command the spirit that brought that to go far from them. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. Every sin, every bondage that tries to hold you, every lie from the wicked one, even from the time of you being a child, even from the time of you being a youth, I break that in the name of Jesus. And I say, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Now continue in the truth. I said, continue in the truth. You know the truth. You know the truth. You know the truth. Glory. Glory to God. Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Well, I'm glad you came to a saturation meeting, aren't you? It didn't go any way like I thought it was going. I didn't know the Holy Ghost said that this one and the one in September would hook together. So I'm anxious to say, can we get to September? Let's just skip this whole month. I just want to get to it. Because if it's just as good as tonight, praise God. I can't wait to come to see what the Lord's going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, he's perfecting everything that concerns you. But you've got to cast the weight of it. Cast the weight of it. Well, it looks impossible. <laughs> to who? To you? That means you're sitting in the wrong seat. Anytime you and I get overwhelmed, we're not seated. We're not living in. Yes, I know that life can get overwhelming. But you get on the top of it through the word and through praise. And just when the devil thought he gave you the best sucker punch he ever gave you, and you're bending over, and then you get up like this. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a little something. Let me tell you a little something. I want to take you back to a day when my Savior was on a cross. He, he said, it is finished. He destroyed you. He made a show of you openly. Amen. Now, I love this. I heard this from Brother Keith one time, but I, 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 I do this. You know, if the, have, has the devil, I don't know, some of you may not have this. Has the devil ever harassed you morning, noon, and night? I mean, just bombarded you with thoughts. You know, like the sermon Pastor Rana, the message she gave today, like I'm never going to get to my future. You know, if the devil starts messing with you about your future, you ought to tell him about his. 
you can say, let's go to a scripture. This is what I know. At the very end, somebody big is going to grab you. They're going to chain you, and they're going to throw you down into the lake of fire. And you're going to be there forever and ever and ever. Oh, they might let you out a little bit, but you're going to go back, and you're going to be there forever. Now, for me, I'm going to be with Jesus. Remember where you used to live? Up in heaven? I'm going to live there. I'm going to live there. I got a mansion there. My whole family's going there. And I'm going to take everybody with me that I can. And we're going to live forever serving the Lord. And we're going to finish our course. Hallelujah. And we're going to get some crowns. And we're going to lay them at Jesus' feet. What you going to be doing? What you going to be doing? Listen, say, oh, don't make the devil mad. He's already mad. Well, you don't want to talk that way. You know, people say, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. You know, I'll never get that. That doesn't belong. Oh, don't say that. You know, the devil, he'll get you. He'll get you. Well, if you're afraid he's going to get you, he's going to get you. But the more time you spend with the Lord, the more time you're in his presence, the really the bolder you'll get. Not arrogant, bold. Back in the storefront, I remember, you know, we're starting the church, and I had this lady come, and, man, the Lord really helped her. Just, I remember, uh, she's the one, she, she, uh, she had been reading scripture, she was all new to her, somebody brought her, and she said, well, I read there in James that if you'll anoint me with oil, I'll be healed. And I was like, all right. So, you know, it was back then we used to carry them big oil bottles, you know, we had one. And uh, so uh, I didn't do like my pastor, Pastor Knight, um, I can talk about him now, but he used to have a thing and he would just like do a cross across your head and you come out, you just had oil all over the place. I saw, I've seen him pour it on people. But anyway, so I just, but I remember she believed it. And so I got a drop of oil and I, I was taking that drop towards her. There were no ushers. And as I went with her to my fingers, she fell out under the power of God. She got up totally healed. But then she brought, so then her husband came. But this is what he said. He's like, that guy is arrogant. He's too sure of God. He's like, he can't be that sure. And I said, you tell him, you tell him, I told her, you tell him that I'm not arrogant. I'm just sure of what God said. Arrogance is boasting on something you can't prove. I can prove it. Has he not said it? Will he not? Come on, we need to be bold. And the more, come on, the more you're in his presence. I'm going to let you go just a second. Remember what they said about Peter and John. These are ignorant, unlearned men. That wasn't a compliment. They're not religious at all. But we can tell that they've been with Jesus. I think it's time for them to tell we've been with Jesus. Amen.